One of Dalton's postulates about atomic theory was that atoms of the same element were going to be exactly alike one another. And as more experiments were done into studying matter and studying the atom, and it was discovered that atoms were actually made of even smaller particles, namely protons, neutrons, and electrons, uh, it became apparent that not all atoms of the same element were exactly alike. Most notably, one of the differences was in terms of their masses. It was possible to have atoms that were the same element, behaved chemically the same way, had many of the same properties, but their masses were slightly different. And these be came to become known as isotopes. Now, one of the ways that scientists study isotopes is by using an instrument called a mass spectrometer. And a mass spectrometer, what it does in essence is it ionizes an element's sample, so it makes it charged, and then it passes it through a magnetic field. And depending on the individual atoms, how heavy they are, or how much mass they have, rather, um, and the ones that have greater mass, as they pass through the magnetic field, they're gonna get pulled off course and their trajectory will change, but it will change only slightly. Compared to, say, uh, an, an atom that has a lighter mass, which will be affected by the uh, magnetic field in a greater fashion. So you get this spreading out of these particles based on their mass, and so we can determine, first of all, what kinds of masses are present for that given element, uh, and also what's the relative abundance of those different ones. So let's take, for instance, the element chlorine. The element chlorine has two main isotopes, chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. Now when we look at the periodic table, we see for the element chlorine that it has an average atomic mass of 35.45, right around there. But when we look at the two isotopes that make up chlorine, we see that they have a mass of 35 and 37. And so we might be tempted to think, well, if there's two different types of chlorine, then to get the average mass of all chlorines, we just add 35 and 37 divide by two, take the mean average, which will give us 36. But that's not what we see on the periodic table. And the reason we don't see that is because chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 aren't present in equal amounts. In other words, it's not a 50-50 split. And so what we need to do when we are finding the average atomic mass is take a weighted average in which we take into account not just the masses, but also the percent abundances. And so here we see the abundances for chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. One of the first things that we can do is just by looking at the relative abundances, we can see that three out of every four chlorines has a mass of 35. And only one out of four chlorines has a mass of 37. So what that tells us right off the bat is that the average atomic mass for chlorine is going to be closer to 35 than it is to 37. Why? because there are more chlorine-35 atoms than there are chlorine-37 atoms. So when we look at the periodic table and see that the average atomic mass is listed as 35.45, hopefully that should make sense to us because the majority of the chlorine atoms do have a mass of 35. So it makes sense that the average mass would be closer to that number. Now as far as getting the actual 35.45, the process that we need to do to, uh, to get that involves for each isotope, taking the mass of that isotope times its percent abundance. Once we set that up, now we need to uh, do the multiplication and those products that we get, we're going to add all of those together um, and then we'll take into account our sig figs for the addition and we should come up with our, our final average atomic mass. Sorry about that. Um, so again, when we look for proper sig figs, we're gonna round off to the nearest hundredth. So we get 35.48 U, and the U simply stands for atomic mass units. That's a mass scale that we use when we're talking about very tiny particles like atoms or molecules, and we're only talking about you know maybe one or, or a handful. And so when we compare this number to the periodic table, we see it's not an exact match. It's 35.48, periodic table gives us 35.45. Um, but when we consider that the masses we used were whole numbers, they're rounded off values. So because we used rounded off values, we can expect a little bit of error uh, in the answer that we got. 
but still we're very very close to what's on the periodic table and as long as the answer that you get when you are calculating the average atomic mass is reasonably close to what you find on the periodic table to the same number of decimal places uh, you can be reasonably well sure that you set things up properly and you, and you did all of your math correctly to find the average atomic mass for an element and all its isotopes thanks for watching hope this was helpful we'll see you next time